Our scripture reading today is from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. Hear now these words. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, this is my body, and this is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. I recently read about a church in Holland in which members had the habit of bowing and kneeling before a whitewashed wall in front of the sanctuary. The reason for that ritual was not really known by any of the people in the sanctuary. It was just what they did. They came into the building, they bowed or they kneeled in front of this whitewashed wall. One day, the trustees decided they needed to repaint that wall. But before they did, they decided to strip away that whitewash. And when they did, behind it was revealed a beautiful picture of Jesus hanging on a cross. You see, the people in that church had originally been bowing before Christ, remembering, remembering Christ and all he had taught them and all that he meant to them. But the reason for the bowing and the kneeling as a congregation was forgotten, and they simply practiced a tradition. I share that story with you today because I realize how routine some things can become, especially within the church. As far back as the New Testament book of the Acts of the Apostles, we read about the people of God gathering together to worship, and to break bread, and to drink from the cup, and to remember Jesus. But the danger, I believe, in this tradition being so old is that for some of us, it is just a ritual or a routine. And among the many acts of worship that we've fallen into the habit of just doing, I believe Holy Communion is one of them. Many people today don't understand and maybe they've never been taught that within the United Methodist Church, Holy Communion is not just remembering Jesus' last supper. Some people may call this meal the last supper, but we're not called to remember a meal. We're called to remember Jesus. There's a mystery that's involved in the sacrament of Holy Communion. We believe that the real presence of Christ is with us, and we can't really explain how. But as we come to the altar, we remember. We remember the reason for Jesus' birth, that because God so loved the world, God sent his only Son, that those who believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. And we remember that Jesus welcomed the little children into his lap and said, do not hinder them. And so we do not hinder children from coming to kneel at the altar, as Adrian has said. All are welcome at this table. We remember Jesus's ministry of preaching and teaching and healing. And we remember that we can come to the altar with our brokenness in our minds, our bodies, and our spirits and receive healing from the presence of Christ. We remember how after Jesus' resurrection, he offered forgiveness to Peter, who had denied him three times. And we remember that Jesus offers forgiveness to each and every one of us. The Christian church has struggled through the centuries to understand just how Christ is present, and different denominations argue over it. But in the United Methodist Wesleyan tradition, we confirm that Christ's presence is here 
although we cannot fully explain it. So John and Charles Wesley, the founders of this great denomination, wrote 166 hymns about communion, about the richness of our understanding of communion. So today, I'm taking a step back from the sermon that I had prepared for you. Maybe God was telling me, don't use your voice. Let the words through the centuries proclaim the meaning of communion to the people today. So we're going to sing some of the hymns in our hymnal about communion. And I pray that the words of these hymns will touch your heart and touch your minds and stay in your spirits that you might come to know the power of the real presence of Christ that we celebrate when we partake in this wonderful meal. Receiving this meal is not about our worthiness. So we begin by singing, Come ye sinners to the gospel feast. We are all ones who have fallen short of the glory of God, but we are all welcomed. You do not need to feel worthy, for none are worthy, yet all are called. So let us stand as we sing in number 616, Come Sinners to the Gospel Feast. <laughs> 